Hey, how's it going guys? It's Yoon here and today I am back with yet another seasonal choice guide video for season 5. It's been over 10 days since the season started and I think it's safe enough to say that most of the meta is figured out at this point. So I figured it's a good time to share with you guys my thoughts and ideas for this season, what items to build, how we should approach fires and whatnot. So make sure to pay attention and let's get right to it. I think routes are a really good place to start here. I got quite a variety that I want to share with you, so make sure to have your taped plans opened up. First we got here is the standard dock slash pond tree zone. Nothing special, no surprises, it's essentially the same route from season 4 with some minor changes to the routing. This build is great since it practically gets you the most damn possible at base build, while keeping full 30% cooldown with healing reductions as well. It also kept the flexible routing with both Dock Factory Pond and Pond Fire Station Dock as reliable passing options, so definitely the most reliable go to route. Make sure to keep this one saved on your default routing plans. Alright, this one is new coming into Season 5, the new Bergenet SCV Warehouse. As the name suggests, it essentially replaces Imperial Crown and Straightjacket from the base build with Bergenet and SCV instead. SCV, in my opinion, is the best value for slot compared to Straightjackets, and if you use it, the reworks that fast, which get you 10% tenacity, combined, they can get you to near 30% tenacity, which is the, almost the equivalent value as Hermes, which takes an entire first quarter to build. The route does have some small downsides size though, such as warehouse start into uptown TP not being the shortest to sprint through, or base build only having 25% cooldown due to trading in crown for Brigonet. But it's a small price to pay in my opinion for the value we're getting though, so make sure to have this one saved as well. If for whatever reason these two routes don't seem to work for you, or you are just simply out of luck with too many people contesting your zones, swapping a cardinal rose with commander's armor opens up surprisingly a lot of options. A few things to keep in mind though. Losing healing reduction is one since we get off of cardinal robes, and if you really want to keep healing reduction in your own kit, then you need to swap off other parts which is not as optimal for stats. But it's more or less about 10 skill amp difference at the end of the day, so I definitely recommend having a few of these capped on the list because who knows. Let's just briefly touch on the transition items as well, but honestly, there's not that much to talk about. Standard transition set is Eclipse, Holy Order, Sultan's Turban, Dragon Skills, and Legs of Steel as always. Nothing special. If you want a bit more value, Cyber Stalkers instead of Turban definitely will make a difference if you can use a Taser Gun passive. For your Blood Holders and Wick Takers, we got a good variety of options as well, just flexibly. Okay, next thing I want to bring up is Augments and Tactical Skills. So, it seems like Maelstrom was about to have some say when when it first came out over tuned, but I think it's become more niche after the nerf. So for now, we are staying on Vampiric without much question, with Frenzy and Endorphin on the rest of the tree, with Fortification, Unwavering Mentality, and Cavalcade finishing it off. You can definitely swap off Cavalcade with Steadfast if you like the Tenacity option with SCV. In terms of tactical skills, we have three main options to choose from. Out of the three, I would personally but confidently recommend that False Oath is the best option to default to at the moment. False Oath pro provides a pretty crazy value for Shoichi. For the cost of only 200 HP, it provides a free damage buff equivalent to having a Holy Orders pre-equipped, plus the heal and sustain it provides that more than makes up for the initial HP cost. It's a very solid option for a character like Shoichi since what we're looking for are damage and survival, and False Souls provides exactly that. Blink is also a solid primary as well depending on your playstyle. If you want to be creative with the dagger geometry, as well as have an emergency dagger reset method for W downtime, it is theoretically the best spell to take for pumping out the absolute most from the character. But I'd say it's also the hardest one at the same time ironically, because of the number of options it opens up for us. Nullification on the other hand became a bit more niche than before due to the season 5 tactical skill level cap change. Before the change, you could choose to stay on level 1 to get an advantage on items compared to other spells since nullification didn't have much difference between the first two levels other than having a lower cooldown. But since the change, unless there are multiple MMOs in the game to polymorph you, there's comparatively less incentive to take it now than the other two spells, but it could definitely get you out from a clutch situation if taken at the right occasion. But at the end of the day, all of this comes down to your preference and playstyle, so don't just take it word for word and instead definitely try out different settings and find your own setup. Okay, so now we know what items to take and which spells to take. 
So how the f*** do we play this character? Luckily for us, Shoichi got a major rework in Season 4 which overall simplified this combo much down to earth or at least much compared to before. However, you still do need a good understanding of main setups and damage expectations through certain combos, so let's get right to it. A good place to start is whether or not you landed E. If you missed, well, go back and see if it hit next time. Hitting E on the enemy marks them to guide all the daggers in range to the marked target as well as receive bonus damage from them. So it essentially means a death sentence if you manage to land it on the enemy carry. But that's rarely going to be the case because the enemy carry just won't play fair and hide behind their big fat tanks. So the more important part here is the dagger that drops on the ground. This dagger can alone pressure the enemy and let you take advantage of the positioning. That's when we can use the dagger to unexpectedly make a mile on the enemy backline in a second. Q2 can also be used similarly in this context with its own free dagger spawn as well, as well as letting us hold on to the E for the bonus damage. Next thing I want to note is what I call a 4W rule. Basically, if you could just send 4 Ws on the target with whatever combo you end up using, you probably kill that person or at least got them super close. This only applies against squishies since it obviously depends a lot on how tanky the enemy is. Okay, so let's go back to this M clip again. Now notice the item difference. I only have one gold item while the MI is on 4, but it doesn't really matter because count how many Ws I hit total. And right after that, I turned to help my team and try to target the enemy Vanya. Watch how I still managed to lock her down even with Daudo. This was only possible though because I had the passive stack saved up from killing the Emma to use right away and my augment staying fully stacked up as well the whole time. So, to summarize, play out the fight by first setting up with a dagger on the ground, whether it that be from E or second Q, and then look for the angle to nuke in hopefully more than 4 W damages into the desired target. It might sound a bit hard, but if you think about it, assuming you're ulting against the wall or on top of a dagger reset, that's already 1 W when you're using W on the target. So you really just need two more dagger uses from the ult and go back on the enemy for the last W. And whatever HP bar the enemy has left, finish off with whatever you have back from cooldowns. And lastly, a little comment on the passive. In fact, notice how I didn't really put much focus on the passive at all. The thing is, you rarely need it to kill someone or win fights anymore as long as your setup was good from the start. Of course, it's a really good tool if you know how to manage stacks properly and maximize the character fully. But if you're watching this video as a starting point, I don't recommend being too obsessed with it just yet. And if you already know what's going on, well, I hope you're enjoying the video then. So that does it for the Season 5 Shoichi Guide. I hope it helped and let me know in the comments if you got any questions. I'll be more than happy to answer all of them. Good luck and thanks for watching.